And this, if this was done a little earlier, right, according to the investigation report, just five seconds earlier, it would not, the crash would not have happened. Okay, so what can these lapses be attributed to? As uh, we can uh, more or less uh, derive, we can tell that the co-pilot might not have wanted to appear disrespectful and cause friction with the higher-ranking captain in the cockpit. This because it appears that there might be a strict hierarchy in play in the cockpit, which emphasizes deference to authority and conflict avoidance. Uh, hierarchies themselves have existed for as long as man itself. Uh, for something that has been in play for that long, it surely must have its merits. However, as can be seen from this crash, it also has its bad side. Okay, so uh, for the uh, for the, our presentation, our main focus will be to uh, examine the hierarchical system in relation to this crash and how it affects workplace communication. Uh, after this, I would like to pass it to Eugene, who will tell you more about the drawbacks of the hierarchical system. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eugene. Next, I'm going to talk about the drawbacks of the hierarchical organization system. As we know, the hierarchical organizational structure tends to channel communication vertically from to the, from the top to the bottom. This may lead to three problems. First one is the communication barriers and the poor flexibility and the complacency and the third one organization disunity. Um, it is said that the success of an organization often depends on the internal communication of within it. However, in a hierarchical <coughs> system, the top level always has the absolute power. Then, the subordinates may feel tension to communicate with their supervisors. This may lead to the communication barriers. The subordinates may always think of whether their situation will annoy their spaces or not. In worst case, the, some, someone may withhold the information even, even though the information is urgent. Um, just as our case study, the co-pilot did not insist what he observed and uh, told the captain twice. And uh, we can easily to all that if if the co-pilot have taken control of the plane directly, the tragedy will not happen. And the second drawback is the poor flexibility and the complacency. Hierarchical structure adapt always adapts slowly to changing needs. If the leader is autocratic and uh, Organization cannot adapt to new demands or advancing technologies or always end up marginalized. For example, the Kodak bankrupt last year. And the company has achieved a big success in low film business but failing to keep up with the digital revolution. The, since the top level of the company was overflowed with the complacency, and they didn't realize they they didn't realize they are fall behind and turn that problem into urgency around a huge opportunity. And uh, the people who saw the problem and had idea for solutions make no progress. Of course, the company went nowhere. And uh, the third drawback is organization disunity. It is that uh, in theory organization has the same target as the unite, unified team. However, in a hierarchical structure, it, it is composed of multiple levels and the people is usually directly responsible to the people above them. And this, this may lead to the lack of trust and uh, unwillingness to hold one another accountable. Team members always feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable to fall in love with their members and they may feel unwillingness to admit, admit their mistake or need for help. And uh, they will always unwillingness to call their peers on the performance which may hurt the team. And 
this may lead to the decision maker benefit an individual rather than the whole organization. Next, I will pass to my teammate Xiao Feng for the advantage of the Thank you, Eugene. Although hierarchy structure has negative effects, it still has positive, positive value in practical applications. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xiao Feng. I will introduce the merits of hierarchical structure. We conclude this merits into two parts. The fast information flow in virtual, in virtual communication and uh, the improvement in team efficiency. As Eugene introduced, uh, there are communication barriers in, uh, in hierarchical structure, but there is a fast uh, communication channel in vertical direction. In hierarchical structure, there is a great awareness of subordinates and uh, uh, superiors, which makes the employees form a vertical relationship chain. In this vertical structure, uh, the information from top level would flow downward uh, systematically in step-by-step -step, uh, process without barriers. This uh, vertical structure also helps in distribution of tasks. So you can observe uh, in vertical communication, hierarchical structure has fast information flow from top level to bottom level. The other merit is hierarchical structure will improve team efficiency. In hierarchical structure, com companies would uh, arrange employees in different levels with uh, defined authorities and uh, responsibilities. Uh, companies would develop, develop employees, employees uh, with specialized tasks by narrowing their focus and the scope of work. This would uh, make the employees only focus uh, only focus the responsibilities uh, at their level only. Uh, their in, uh, individual efficiency will improve. And uh, this also gives employees a high possibility to be more professional in their certain area. And uh, in hierarchical structure, there is where defined the level of uh, authority and the leadership. That means lower levels will strictly follow the instructions from top levels, gives the better execution of tasks. With high individual efficiency and uh, better execution of tasks, we can observe in hierarchical structure there is high team efficiency. A typical example of this hierarchical structure is our, our army, but we can also observe it in our tutorial. Without hierarchy, we would do our assignments more individually than in a team. Our information flow, our assignment execution, and the presentation will be all in mass because of disordered communication and uh, no, speci no specialized task. However, we developed a hierarchical structure with the chain of Dr. Chan, group leader, and group member. The information flow from Dr. Chan to our group leader then transferred to our group members. And uh, our group leader also distributes specialized tasks uh, to our group members with uh, defined responsibilities and uh, authorities. In this way, our team uh, our individual efficiency would uh, improve and uh, we will have better execution of the task. So with hierarchy structure, we can do our assignment with higher team efficiency and a better quality. So I will pass to Guo Xiang for the next part. Thank you. Thank you, Xiao for his part on the positive aspects of the hierarchy system. For now, I'll be moving on to some of the ways, what are some of the ways to mitigate the drawbacks of uh, the hierarchy system, and uh, how specifically this crew resource management can tackle the communication barrier faced by subordinates when they are trying to present the idea across to their superior. So, to give a general background of what this crew resource management is all about, it's actually being implemented in the aviation industry initially, but over the years it has also uh, crossed over to fields such as in the fields of medicine, as well as fire rescue operation, where life decisions uh, have to be made. And uh, it's, it has also uh, been adopted by some of the corporate world where business professionals 
uh, in business professionals where communicate uh, where effective communication between interactive personnel is required. And precisely because of the fact that the training program is not standardized, therefore it can be easily morphed to suit the needs of different industry. And next, I'll be touching on the purpose of this crew resource management. So uh, it actually allows participants in this program, which is primarily the subordinates and superiors, to understand and appreciate each of their roles and responsibility in the team. And next, they, have, they will learn about the factors such as stress, crisis, work overload, and in this particular case of the air crash, which will be the verdict, could lead to human error, as no matter how high uh, employment or how much power or role that superior has, he's still a human at the end of the day, and he's vulnerable to making uh, mistakes. And that requires the attention of uh, us subordinates to give them feedback to assist in making their decision. And what this shared mental model is about is what I mentioned earlier on. It requires the situation awareness of each of our teammates uh, giving feedback to the superior in assisting of making his decision. So uh, the overview of what, what are some of the things that I've gone through in crew resource management is making inquiries. As relating to the case study itself, the co-pilot co uh, will have to authenticate with the captain in uh, his decision to carry on the glide slope landing. Secondly, he had to seek relevant data. In, into, in the aspects of the air crash, he didn't authenticate with the air traffic controller as to whether the glide slope was working. That led to the captain uh, challenging the co-pilot and the flight engineer as to isn't the glide slope working and that led to the, the, the crisis, uh, that led to the tragedy. And thirdly, advocating actions. Upon receiving your evidence and your standpoint of view, you should present your idea across in a firm and confident manner, but not in a disrespectful way. And fourthly, that would be to propose an action plan. As a subordinate, you can't possibly reprimand your superior for making what you think is a wrong decision. Instead, you should come up with a solution or alternative to uh, uh, aid them into changing their decision into a better one. And fifthly, it would be resolving conflict. In this aspect of crew resource management program, both the superior and the, both the superior and subordinates who are involved in this program can okay, understand that a challenge is not an act of insubordination uh, or sabotage, and that um, uh, and that uh, and that the way of challenging it should be done in a uh, respectful manner. And lastly, you'll be making a decision where both of them will come. To both subordinates and superior will come together into making a common goal. And now, I'll pass on my time to Jen Sen, where you present about the conclusion of this aspect and what our group stand is on the hierarchy system. Thank you. Thank you, Guo I am Jen Sen, and I'll be concluding our presentation with three things. One, we kept of what my movement has went through. Second thing, we will be applying, we will be adopting CRM to see how it can apply to our life. And finally, we will end off our group stand. A recap of what my group has went through thus far. We have identified the Korean air crash uh, that happens in 1997 as a conflict management case study. Among all the factors that have caused us the air crash, we attribute a major contribution of the air crash to a strong hierarchy structure. And Jason then went on to introduce the origin of the hierarchy structure. Then Xiao Feng and uh, Liu Qin then went on to discuss about the drawback and merit of such a hierarchy system before Hua Xiang took the presentation one step ahead by introducing the crew resource management, which is used to mitigate the drawback of such a hierarchy system. It allows, it focuses on communication concept that allows subordinate to effectively challenge order when necessary. And finally, it is very applicable to most organizations. And I'll be sharing how we can use crew resource management uh, in our life as new graduate when, when we step out in the working society. Now before that, I'd like to share a little bit of my own personal experience. I was once an intern in, sorry, I was once an intern in um, a marketing intern in a multinational company which has very strong stand in the hierarchy structure. As such, the advice suggestion from the junior executive and the interns were not well received by the senior executives. And this has not led to a very pleasant working experience uh, among the juniors. So I believe many of us sitting over here today will one day be in the same shoe that I have been or already has been exper experiencing such a problem. Therefore, we would like to show how we can employ crew resource management to tackle some of these problems that we may face in our life when we step out into the working society. The first, the first thing is to argue respect, respectively to reduce and minimize conflicts. This agreement exists everywhere. 
But the worst form of disagreement can happen is between you and your boss. Your boss being the one who pays your paychecks. So we don't want that to occur. So the first thing we can do is to build a relationship of trust. Followed by showing respect to our boss. In this way, by building such a relationship, we can actually reduce or any combativeness during discussion will be more treated, more likely to be treated as a positive than a negative effects. The next and more, most important thing is to know your boss. Each boss is different. Their power, responsibility is all different. So strategies to deal with them ought to vary uh, accordingly. Effective workers like us need to adapt effectively to the need of our employer. And we can do that by observing the people around us. Learning the good, avoiding the mistakes. And in that way, we hope that we have shown how CRM can be employed in our future as a, uh, sorry, as a graduate in the working society. Next, I would like to show a video of a uh, fourth year MSC student. His name is Lo Sao Jin. He has, four, uh, he has two years of working experience in Citibank and was also, was also placed under the Citibank Management Associate Program. He will share with us how, from his point of view, how he can better deal with the hierarchy structure in any organization. The best steps in hierarchy, there are numerous approvals. For a single project, you may need to talk to multiple approvals. And hence, presentation is key to bringing across your presentation ideas. There are two points to presenting effectively. Firstly, I believe it is to pitch your presentation to whom you are speaking to. For instance, for a single state project, to the operations manager, I'll pitch my presentation to reduce the X percentage of the wrong time. And for instance, the risk manager, I'll pitch my presentation to decrease Y percentage of risk. Secondly, the point of presenting effectively is to make your first senior presentation, is to nail it. And because senior management doesn't have time now to hear you out, you have to pitch very well in your first minute, be clear in what you want to achieve. So basically, Sao Jin has shared the important point of bridging the gap between you 